begin with, uh, please tell me your name and where are you coming from? And tell me also, what does it mean, you've been here in Mexico, but what does it mean for you being here in La Ventana in this event? So, um, my name is Gisela Polido and I'm uh, 26 years old. I'm coming from Spain. Actually, I was born in Barcelona, but I live in Tarifa. And um, I've heard so much about this place. Uh, I started uh, foiling, like racing foiling uh, this summer. And I've heard so much about this place. Like there was like the foil, like hydrofoil mecca, like in, like in the world. And like everybody was coming here, like to test new gear, new kites, new foil, new boards. So I heard like this was like a great place for foiling. And uh, the first uh, event of the year was here and that we should come here, you know, just to compare ourselves with uh, rest, the rest of the riders. So yeah, that's what I heard. That's nice. So, so tell me, you, you said, and uh, that's a good part you said, and this is the first event of the year to, to compare a little bit where you are. For you, this is your third event, a uh, uh, racing event or? Yeah, the international third event. So I first uh, went to Italy, to the Europeans in September, and then to Cagliari. There was a World Series. And then I did like small events in Spain, like two events, and that's like the third main event, I guess. Yep. That's, That's cool. cool. So, so far, what do you think of La Ventana? Like, uh, it was something that you expected or how was your expectations? How, how, how do you, you've been here in Light Wind for the last mm -hmm. couple of days and during the event, mm -hmm. but how, how do you like it so far? I love it. Uh, actually, that's Mexico, you know, like this is my, is my second time in Mexico, but the first time I was in Playa del Carmen and Cancun and all this area and it's really touristy and it's, you don't have the feeling that you're in Mexico and that's like, you know, real Mexico and I just, you know, I, it's the first time I could see like the huge cactus, you know, for me, it's just amazing. The landscape, it's so cool and uh, the, the color of the water, the, the mountain in the background, um, when it's strong wind, it's amazing. Like, it's just uh, great conditions for foiling and actually it was, I was expecting this, you know, sometimes you have like, uh, like you imagine a place and then when you come to the place, it's not what you expect. And you were like oh, a little bit disappointed, but here it was the other way around. I was expecting it was going to be like okay place, but actually I loved it here, so it's really nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And now, now tell me a little bit. Uh, we know that you you've been doing freestyle, or you did a freestyle, and you had a lot of uh, world titles. And yeah, now, nice. now tell me a little bit like the the difference for you being on a twin tip, doing freestyle, and now that you are doing hydrofoil racing. There are a lot of difference, uh, but one of the most important ones for me is that when I was doing freestyle, I would uh, compete maybe in three, four hits uh, total in the total competition, and it was like seven minutes hit plus three minutes between. So let's say ten minutes by four times, so forty minutes I was on the water racing, actually, and this is this is just like <laughs> like with racing you like four or five hours every day on the water. And that's just so insane for me. It's so nice, you know. Of course, you get super tired and it's exhausting. Uh, by the end of the day, your legs are just completely burned. Like, it's really exhausting, but just the fact to be able to be on the water for so long is just amazing. And no waiting, you know, just, just go and race with the guys together in the same fleet. It's, that's awesome. That's one of the main things, you know. Then, of course, it's different, you know. When you're competing on freestyle, you have your strategy of the five tricks, you have to perform, blah, blah, blah. And with the racing, is just everything combined, you know, like the start, the tactics, the cut you choose, even your stance, like it's just a whole new thing, you know. And in, in hydrofoil racing, you have the time to really uh, prove uh, your skills yourself, right? Out there on the water for a long period of time. Like we can do six, you know, five races a day. Mm -hmm. And then, but every time you have another chance, like, okay, I can, okay, I made those mistakes, but I can fi fix this. Maybe I will try this new strategy in, during the course. Mm -hmm. But let's say for you, you know, doing a lot of freestyle, like, what does it feel for you? Like, did you, have you, like, enjoy? Like, how, how does it feel for you now yeah. being there close to everyone with hydrofoils and, and high speed? Yeah, I just, uh, you just have to trust. Trust yourself, trust the other guys that are around you, especially like, on the starting line where you're so close to each other and anything can happen or when you're racing against someone on the downwind and you're going 30 knots or in the reach you know you just have to trust and then like the adrenaline you get as well no? like going so fast and like above the water 
on the foil and um, I don't know, it, it feels nice. Yeah, I like it, the adrenaline. <laughs> tell, yeah. tell me a little bit more, like someone like you, then you, you started to kite since you were like seven years old, something like that. I started flying kite with six actually. And, and six, with eight, yeah. six years old. Yeah. Like what's that feeling? Like they're very inside feeling and you get from the sport. And now these two different things because like what you were talking about from freestyle is different mm -hmm. than racing. Yeah. But it's, it should be, I think, something like it, it's kind of like it match the two of them. Will you describe a little bit that feeling of that? Then it's like, I want to keep that feeling in me. Like I want to keep feeling that and why not to, to even stronger feeling of it? I mean, I, I think kiteboarding is, it's been with me since I was almost like, yeah, like a baby, you know? And so I grew up with a sport and I did all the disciplines. I did freestyle, bigger, like, Sur like strapless surfing, now with the racing, uh, the falling. So it just like the relationship I have with the sport is so like intimate, you know. Like I, I love. I've been flying kites since I was six years old, and like now changing fl from inflatable kite to foil kite, it's a whole new thing, you know. And, or like the kite is talking to me at the same time, and we're communicating because the wind shifts, the wind drops, or it picks up, and the kite is just behaving in a different way, you know. So you have to always. Uh, think ahead and uh, try to make it work somehow. So I like a lot. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me a little bit. Actually, um, it's it's really interesting to see you like on the water. Uh, you know, you are a very uh, friendly person. Like in the beach, you are like you know you talk with people and like. You know, you're very friendly, but I seen you out there on the water and when you are on the course, like you are full focus on it. Okay. Like what what is what is uh Gisela <laughs> telling inside when you are right there on the moment, like you know that you, you got a tag or you are very close to that person, what is what is telling you here inside to keep that focus on so you can perform in the world that you are doing? I don't know. I think it's really important to separate, you know, those things and don't take it personally. I mean on the beach you should be friendly because you're you like you spend so much time with with those guys. Like I was competing with ten years old, and I spent twelve years old, uh, sorry, since I was ten until twenty two or something with the same people on the beach, and they were my openness on the water. But outside, I mean, I spent almost more time than with my parents because I'm always training in Brazil with these same guys, training in Tarifa with the same guys, competing all over the world with the same guys, and at the end it's just like family, you know. And the people they're like super competitive, they don't look at each other or they like talking bad about it, each other and you're like, come on, this is like kids, you know. It's okay to be competitive on the water, but then outside just be more relaxed because then you just have so much stress in the, on your body, you know. And when you're racing, you're racing, when you're competing, you're competing, when you're just doing the tricks, you have to perform good and don't crash. And even like you can play some strategies like playing with the other, with the other guy, but I don't know, I think it's just a uh, mother as well of personality. I'm pretty mellow in the water, like I change a lot. It's like uh, I put my wetsuit on and like shh, I change. Put my clothes on and I'm then my glasses and I'm a different girl, <laughs> different person. Yeah. That's very nice. And there is a lot of people out there that they are thinking on, you know, to start into the sport, like kiteboarding, you know. But there is also people who is doing kiteboarding that they are thinking like, I may want to try, you know, car racing. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you tell to that people who is thinking about it? Like, like is this like, is it worth it? Like, what is it the 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 reward and no. you can get from it? Like, uh, I think the the best feeling comparing to freestyle. You know, when I was competing in freestyle, is that you would all will always have the judges scoring your tricks, and it's maybe you like. The, the judge likes your trick or maybe not and then the score is like subjective no but with the racing it's just you're faster you get first to the finish line you win it's like not much can happen unless if you do something wrong and you need to know the rules right and if you get a protest because you did something wrong well it's your fault uh, then yes but the one who gets first is the winner and this is something really rewarding because when you when you do you perform good and you know you you were your, the fastest on the on the race it's like an amazing feeling and nobody can take it from you because you won, you know, it's like clear. So 
So like for Theo, that is just winning every single race. Must be like, I'm God or something, you know. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me, tell me. Um, we know that you have a long, long career, like being an athlete and professional athlete. Have you been in that situation, like those hard moments, you know, when when you know you 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 know that you gotta step up. Like you know that if you don't step up or you stand up, you're gonna stay down there. Like I don't know, like maybe an injured or like a family problem or like would you share something like like that? Like of course, everybody has this, and you're not gonna be different than others. I mean, I have it, and you had it one time in your life, you know. So the, this is not an, not an excuse. Sometimes people get like a little bit like, oh, something's wrong, and then you get a little bit depressed, and then, but probably uh, the other competitor already had a problem in his life or like family or like injuries, so just have to be strong because you're not the only one, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, I don't know, injuries, the, the good thing is that the body recovers, like normally, like if you dislocate your shoulder like I did, it's gonna go back in place and then it's gonna heal. Same with the knee, you know, like you break your, ligament you have surgery and then after the recovery you're going to be back so i think i have always a really positive men mentality so i think that's important as well but don't think like oh the world is like against me or something no it's like everybody has this problem so it's not just you, you know, everybody get injured and everybody has family problems or like my, my, my father um actually i shouldn't say that because <laughs> nobody not many people from my family knows me, but my father was sick and okay, like many people is sick, you know, so that shouldn't affect your your career, I think. Should be strong. I don't know. Okay. I'm Gisela Polito, I'm from Spain, and this is Hydrofoil, the fastest class in the world. Right on, thank you. <laughs> thank you.